All right, are you ready? As I'll ever be. I'm John, and tonight I want answers about Black Lives Matter. There's no stopping us now. I'm John Thompson. I'm John A. Vink. I'm Keith Statenfield. I'm Loretta Beavers. I'm AJ Minnick. I'm Jennifer Sim. I'm Jim Tu. I'm Bobby Chastain. These stories tonight on John Wants Answers. John Wants Answers. John Wants Answers. Give John Answers. John Wants Answers. Give John Answers now. All right, welcome to the show. Check your calendar. If it says June 11th, 2020, then you are watching the episode I'm recording right now. My special guest tonight is Keith Statenfield. Hi, Keith. Hi, everybody. I mean, I'm not much of a special guest. I'm really, I'm really your ordinary guest. There's nothing ordinary about you, Keith. I, I beg to disagree. I, I spend all day every day with me, and I'm very normal. Are you getting bored of yourself? Yeah. You know, <laughs> COVID's getting to me, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you got the COVID blues. Yeah. Well, tonight we're talking about Black Lives Matter. Okay. Now, um, historically speaking, we have talked about black issues before on this show. Yeah. And now we, we acknowledge have. that we are two privileged white dudes talking about what people who are of color are going through. And we don't yeah. really know, but we'll do our best. Um, I try to have black people come on the show to talk about black issues, and they won't. No, they so, no. You, you've had very little luck. This is the best we've got. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, I mean, I I assume the reason is that they have watched your show. I think I had one person agree to come on the show, and then I think they saw the show, and then they all of a sudden couldn't make it to the show. Uh, that yeah, that comports with my that comports with my assumption. Okay. Um, hey, Juneteenth is coming up. So today's June eleven. June 19th is what they call Juneteenth. Yeah. Do you know what that is? It's a holiday. What, what do they celebrate on this holiday? Uh, Juneteenth is, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's celebrating the day that uh, slaves in Texas finally ha found out that the Civil War had ended. Because and back then, news did not travel instantly. Right. And it took a while before the news that the South had surrendered and that therefore the Emancipation Proclamation was now the law of the land everywhere and that there was no slavery in America anymore and that therefore all of the African American slaves in Texas uh, were free. Very good. Um, how do people celebrate Juneteenth? Uh, I assume picnics and parades and stuff. Like I had seen Juneteenth written on my calendar for years and years and years and years. And then I think last year I finally looked it up to see what it was. And it said what you just said. Has Juneteenth started becoming a bigger deal in recent years compared to- I, like I, I think it, I think there's basically been a resurgence. You yeah. know, it, uh, it was celebrated a lot back in the late, you know, after 1865. Like 18 Big day for probably a while. Right. Uh, but I think like a lot of things, it stopped being something that was hugely celebrated. And I suspect that probably always been celebrated more in Texas and in other southern states. Right. Probably not a huge Juneteenth celebration in Montana. Just an assumption, but I suppose in the free states, it wasn't a big celebration since they were already free. But in the southern states, it was a big deal. I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think these days it has taken on more of a, you know, this is one of the few things we can call a holiday that was good for us <laughs> uh, as a subculture in America. Okay, so um, we're constantly hearing of stories of police using unnecessary lethal force, force on black people. Um, and so we had one recently, of course, that George Floyd um, was lethally had force on him. He died. Yeah. 
Yeah. With uh, that. For what seems like, you know, unnecessary reasons, right? This guy was almost unarmed, not being violent. Uh, and so this, we hear sort of this all the time, and then sometimes it results in big protests. Um, so like Ferguson a couple of years ago, I guess it was five years ago. Yeah, Ferguson a few years ago. Um, it resulted in protests, you know, around the country. And then now with George Floyd, we're seeing protests. But, you know, two months ago, something bad happened and there were protests. What do you think um, causes a protest to happen? Um, well, I mean, I think, I think these protests happened because there was, I mean, first of all, I think lately we have much more visual evidence mm -hmm. of what's actually happening um, with police brutality, with police treating uh, black Americans and was the Rodney King Americans. situation one of the first times we had like a video of this happening? Uh, no, it's not. Um, but it's the most recent one. No, Rodney and King was like it, 30 years ago. Uh, Rodney King was 30 years ago. That was a VHS tape shot from, you know, across the street. Yeah. So you could barely, you know, uh, you couldn't really make out what was happening. Uh, in the Rodney King thing. Um, but it was still, you know, one of, at the time, it was one of the first, look, here's actual evidence of uh, a number of police officers just wailing away and hitting a guy. And then later, you know, saying it didn't happen. And then the video was released, you know, the guy that shot the video took it to the news. Um, and then I mean, the Rodney King riots didn't happen after the video came out. The Rodney King riots happened a year and a half later when the police officers who were charged mm -hmm. uh, were then acquitted uh, by a, I think, all white jury or significantly very white jury. Right. Um, and, you know, at the time, lost it, you know. Los Angeles just went, this This is wrong. That should not be the way the police get to act. Right. And I think that was kind of also true here that uh, uh, in this case, cell phone video, which is, you know, fairly clear. It's much clearer what's going on than, you know, in this videotape 30 years ago, but yeah. There's a police officer. He has uh, Mr. Floyd in the ground. Mr. Floyd is, he doesn't appear to be resisting arrest. Uh, and the police officer just has his knee on his neck. And Mr. Floyd just keeps saying, I can't breathe. You gotta stop doing what you're doing to me. And the police officer seems to be ignoring him. And there are three police officers standing there with him. And it, you know, you see that and you think, I can't see why this police officer thought this was the right thing to do. Right. There's no, I, I don't know what set of facts you would present to me for what happened before this that would justify the actions he took. Right. And then, you know, with, in spite of that video coming out four or five days later, they still hadn't charged the police officer and arrested them. Uh, and I think that just started to ramp up people's, you know, people got together and a lot of people saw that and agreed. And they said, we're gonna, we are gonna make our anger at this situation publicly visible. And we are gonna demand that the forces that are supposed to be protecting all of us actually protect all of us and we're going to say that you know these people who we think are terrible people doing bad things get held accountable by the justice system and that did eventually happen i mean the first steps of that eventually happened were 
going to have to see what the next steps are. If 18 months from now, all four of those officers are acquitted of all charges uh, and things haven't significantly changed, I, I, I worry and wonder about what happens then. Right. So when I first heard of the Black Lives Matter movement, it made a lot of sense, sure, Black Lives Matter. Um, and then people started saying, well, all lives matter. And I, you know, on the face of it, you know, sure, sounds reasonable that all lives matter. Um, and so what I was missing, I guess, I had to look it up and see what the big hub love was, is by saying all lives matter, you're kind of dismissing the fact that black people are having problem with their lives not mattering. And it's not true of all people. Is, is that a fair way to look at it? I, I think that's a fair way to look at it. I mean, saying black lives doesn't matter doesn't say only black lives matter. It says we're, I mean, I think it says we, we don't think you are treating our lives as if they matter. And we are telling you our lives matter. Yes. And we are demanding and expecting you to follow through on the ideals of our country where we are supposed to be treated well. So um, I, I know people who are black and I wanted to reach out to them and say like, I know I'm a white guy and I don't know, I can't ever kind of know what you're going through. But I kind of want to tell them, hey, you have my thoughts and my sympathies and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm not sure I went about this correctly. I'm going to read to you the message I sent to, to my friend. Yeah. I said, hi, black person. Now, I didn't actually say black person. I used their no. name, but I, want, I don't want to say it now. Good, good. That would have been a mistake. Yes. I'm horrified and angered not only about Floyd, but how you are treated at hotels. I can never know what it's like. I wish all the best for you and your family. I don't know what to say, so I hope this doesn't come across as stupid. And so I wrote that to my friend. I didn't hear anything back. Do you think I came across as stupid? Well, I'm the wrong guy to ask, because the guy you need to ask is the, the or gal. I'm not going to say it was a guy. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I will say I am currently uh, in many ways entirely lost about what the right things to say are. Right. Um, because I mean, everything is pretty shitty right now. And words don't make things less shitty. Actions make things less shitty, and that takes a long time. But words can indicate support. I mean, in short, I don't think you came across as stupid, or at least no more stupid than you ever come across. Um, have to actually fix a lot of the you know, systemic racism that has been going on for hundreds of years here in America and longer than that everywhere uh, in varying degrees and different ways. This can't be a one-time thing. We can't all go out and have a march tomorrow and then agree tomorrow night over dinner that, whoa, we fixed that one. Let's move on to our next problem. Uh, this is, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen and we are gonna have to hold the people in charge responsible for moving forward every day and every week and every year. And we're gonna have to hold ourselves responsible and Think about what we can do to make the situation better. Think about what we have done and continue to do that makes it possible for evil to thrive 
in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, 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 I don't have any great answers here. I just know we have to do the things we can think about doing and we have to make sure that things actually get done. Right. So I tried to organize an episode back in February for Black History Month. And I invited some black people I know to come on the show. And so I wrote them this email. Now I also want to know if this email is appropriate or not. Yeah, 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 okay. Hello, black people. Now again, sure. I use their names instead of okay. black people. Good, because that, yeah, go on. I had an idea for my show, and I don't know if it's good or bad. Okay. So black already, history month, already you're being stupid. Already I'm being stupid? Yeah. I'm claiming I don't know if my idea is good or bad. Keep going, keep going, keep talking. For black History Month, I would, would it be okay to have you come on and talk about racism and the black experience in Silicon Valley? And um, I didn't hear back from them, either of them. That's not a surprise. So do you think I came across as stupid? Uh, yeah, they're kind of stupid. Yeah. Okay. What could I have done not... differently? And what part was Well, stupid? first of all, maybe, maybe show a little more interest and a little more, here's what I would want to talk about. And maybe call them. Is this the kind of person you talk to all the time? Um, every few months. Yeah, yeah, no. That's not the kind of email you send to someone who you talk to every few months. Hmm. Okay. Like, like if you had lunch every Thursday, and you said, yeah. hey, you want to come on my crazy TV show? Mm -hmm. Even then, it's kind of stupid. Oh. Yeah. How would you invite some black friends onto your show? To talk about well, on my I have no guests on my TV show. I know, but let's let's say you wanted to break the mold for a very special Keith explains. Wow. Um, well, I think you would want to have a little more detail about what you wanted to know about in particular. Uh huh. Um, I mean, I uh, in a certain way, I think. A lot of people don't want to go on TV shows and talk about racism in Silicon Valley. I mean, it 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 deeply affects everyone. But first of all, most people don't want to go on a TV show at all. I don't understand those people. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, you know, maybe for their first TV appearance, don't want to have a really heavy show where they're talking about stuff that has seriously impacted them and mm -hmm. held them back. Or maybe they don't want to be seen as, you know, trying to speak for everyone. Or maybe they don't have a lot of great thoughts on this, you know, not on this particular topic, but no, they don't have any great set of coherent thoughts that they think mm -hmm. they want to go on TV and talk about. I mean, okay. most of the time, again, my whole purpose for going on this show for you most of the time is because I can subtly needle you a lot. Yes. And I just derive enjoyment from I'm not, I can't it's do that, that on this show. But like ordinarily, subtle. I can kind of mock you yes. for stuff. And that, everyone that sees this show loves that part of it. So it has them coming back. Yeah. Yeah, but not this week. Oh, okay. Okay, so I've worked at a number of tech companies, you know. Sure. And, and I don't see racism in Silicon Valley, but I worry that I'm living in a bubble and just not seeing it. Now, have you seen any racism in the workplace? Um, I mean, the short answer is I'm sure I have. But I'm also not, I'm sure I have seen racism. Uh, I haven't really seen per, what I think of as particularly overt racism in the workplace. Uh, and by the way, your backdrop stopped. Yeah, I can, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, subtle racism and to an extent, you know, sexism. I, I'm certain I've seen, I know th there are occasions I've seen sexism in the workplace. Um, Silicon Valley is demographically unlike a lot of the rest of the country in terms of uh, African Americans are a, a significant minority. There are. Right. I, I would say Silicon Valley is very diverse, except that when it comes to African Americans, where they're a lot lower. Um, yeah, and I think we have. Uh, I mean, we have a significantly larger number of ethnic Chinese mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ethnic uh, Indians, um, Southeast Asians, right? Um, uh, Japanese, Korean uh, are probably, you know, I probably know more people from those groups than I would if I still lived in Wisconsin. Right. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin, area of Wisconsin I grew up in was also, it was mostly white people. Uh, you know, the big cultural divide was which kind of Lutheran you were. <laughs> All right, so we had um, a curfew in the city of San Jose when the protest started up. Did the city of Santa Clara have a curfew? Uh, Santa Clara did have a curfew, uh, a little shorter than the San Jose one. Uh, and for the city of Santa Clara, which borders the city of San Jose, mm -hmm. uh, we had a curfew uh, because they were concerned that the protest in San Jose in the area around Valley Fair Mall would spill over into Santa Clara. Right. Um, did we need a curfew since there was already a county level shelter in place? Um, well, a curfew, uh, the word need is funny to me there. I don't think we needed a curfew at all. Uh -huh. um, uh, a curfew is a mechanism for the police to say, you're not allowed to be outside your home right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, shelter in place is, the county has said you can leave the, you know, the current shelter in place is designed to say, you should stay in your house, you can leave for the following reasons, um, but it's not a strict prohibition, right? If I want to get in my car and drive over and go jogging, shelter in place lets me do that. Oh, okay. Uh, a curfew says, you know, unless a very short list of rules, the police can just say, we have declared this an illegal gathering in violation of the curfew, and then they can start arresting people. Now, practically speaking, if I just, during a curfew, got in my car and drove to the grocery store, it's doubtful I'd get pulled over and arrested, right? Uh, well, stuff you would, although grocery stores closed for the curfew, that was part of the curfew. Yeah. But I'm, I'm bordering Campbell, so could I have like driven to the city of Campbell and then gone to grocery store? You probably could have, yes. Yeah. Um, but again, you're a middle-aged white guy, and they are much less likely to pull you yeah. over, tell you you're violating the curfew. Are you saying I have white and gray privilege? Uh, yes, at least okay. white. Um, has the constitutionality of the curfew been established? Uh, it has. Uh, there is, the Constitution does provide broad authority to uh, executive branches in times of emergency and insurrections and uprisings to do things like curfews. Uh, and, uh, you know, legislatures uh, like city councils can pass emergency measures which restrict freedom of movement and uh, freedom of speech in certain situations for the public good. Mm. Uh, I doubt a 90-day curfew that utterly prevented anyone from being outside their house 
you know, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. would be found constitutional, but for five or six days when they have had significant protests, which have had associated property damage and things like that, mm -hmm. that the courts are going to permit it. All right. So there's a new movement as part of this whole thing called defund the police. Um, does defund mean like reduce the funds for police or eliminate the funds um, the police? I mean, defund the police is a slogan. There are a lot of different people with different opinions. Um, some of them more and less, you know, there's a range of thought. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a, uh, I think a lot of people that are on the defund the police uh, bandwagon movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the goal isn't to, the goal for a lot of them isn't to drop police funding to zero dollars and have zero people who act like police officers. But the goal is to uh, reduce uh, the number of, of officers who carry guns and who you know, try to, uh, I guess, fix or handle a lot of the ills in society and to an extent take the money we are paying police officers, which is substantial because they have training um, and uh, police officers, uh, at least in California, are reasonably well paid, you know, and use some of that money for social services or housing services or mental health services. So the city of San Jose has a police force, but not all cities in this area have their own police force. Does the city Correct. of Santa Clara have its own police force? Santa Clara has its own police force. Um, Cupertino, Campbell has its own police force. Right. Um, Cupertino doesn't have a police force. Right. So Cupertino in that case- Contracts with the sheriff's office, which is countywide, Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, deputy sheriffs provide uh, the equivalent of police services uh, in Cupertino. So any city um, that doesn't have their own police force will have a sheriff from the county, is that right? Well, every county has a sheriff because okay. that's state law or the state constitution. I don't know where it's defined. So we abolish a city police force it's not like chaos in the purge and lawlessness. There will still be some law enforcement. Um, well, if tomorrow morning they there were zero police officers in San Jose, uh, there are not enough deputy sheriffs in the county, right, to maybe take on all of the things the San Jose police currently do. But that so, could be fixed. Ramp up in a. It could, I mean, I, it's clearly gonna be a process to try mm -hmm. to right size, uh, to use a band, you know, to use a buzzwordy thing, uh, what uh, authority and what numbers police forces need. Yeah. Well, I think we're out of time. Um, so to our viewers, if you agree or disagree, what we say. We'd be very interested in hearing from you. You can tweet us at John Want Answer. Sure. Did we get any tweets after the last show? Um, not yet. Not yet. That's, I don't think you're gonna then. That's still coming like, up. I don't think people watched the show a month ago and were like just sitting on a tweet in their drafts. <laughs> All right. Uh, our next show will be in July. July, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So, high five. Good show. Oh, wait, 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 w